Measuring de jure judicial independence, or the degree of judicial independence as found in legislation, is hard. It's almost harder than measuring de facto judicial independence. When we think about de facto judicial independence, we have strong views about what high or low de facto independence looks like. If a senior minister is calling up the High Court and complaining to them, then that's a sign of low de facto independence. But with de jure judicial independence, it seems like countries might have multiple different routes to achieving high independence. One country might achieve high de jure judicial independence by having life tenure for its judges, but with relatively few other provisions. Another country might have long and defined judicial terms, an explicit statement of judicial independence, a ban on reappointment so that judges can't be rewarded for good behaviour or punished for bad behaviour, a ban on reducing judicial salaries whilst in office, and so on. I'm sure if I gave you five minutes, you could think of lots of other possible legal provisions that might affect judges' independence. For this reason, I'm going to discuss one example index of de jure judicial independence. I don't mean to suggest that this is the only index of judicial independence or even the best index. But this example index comes from a 2003 paper by Lars Feld and Stefan Voigt. It includes 12 different indicators. Each of these indicators is scored on a scale from 0 to 1. The total measure is just the average of all of the scores for these different indicators. Now, some of these indicators are measured very simply. For example, one of the indicators is whether or not the Chief Justice has discretion over case assignation. The rationale for including this indicator is that if the Chief Justice does have discretion, then she or he can engineer their preferred outcome by giving the case to a panel of friendly judges. Accordingly, this indicator is scored zero when the Chief Justice does have discretion and one when they don't have any discretion. Some other indicators are measured on a more involved scale. For example, the indicator on the length of term of each judge uses the following scale. When you measure these indicators on a 0 to 1 scale and average them, you get a scale from 0 to 1. In the Feld and Void data, the top scoring country was Colombia with a score of 0.94, the median country was Israel with a score of 0.66, and the worst scoring country that they looked at was Tanzania with a score of 0.26. For this measurement, and for any measurement based on multiple indicators, we can always ask, are all of these indicators necessary? Are all of these indicators logically connected to the thing they're supposed to be measuring? And are all of these indicators weighted appropriately? But this just shows us how hard the task is. It's almost like before we can measure de jure independence overall, we need to solve a series of minor problems like does increased term length lead to greater de facto judicial independence or does discretion in case assignment lead to greater de facto judicial independence. It's a bit like building the railway whilst travelling on it. <laughs>